NSAIDs, which is short for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, are a class of medications used to treat inflammation and fever. In this mnemonic video, we'll teach you an easy way to remember the most important NSAID drug names, their clinical uses, and side effects, so you'll be ready for the NCLEX. For today's video, we're headed to the Himalayan slopes where a man was having a blast riding his sled down the snowy slopes. This sled will serve as your memory anchor for the NSAIDs. Sled for NSAID, or the N-SLED, if you will. Like I mentioned before, NSAIDs stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Unfortunately, these drugs don't share a common ending to their drug names, so we'll need to review each drug name individually. As the man was riding his sled down the mountain, this Ibex rammed right into him. After all, Ibexes are super common in the high Himalayan mountains like this one. Coincidentally, an Ibex should help you remember the drug name Ibuprofen. Ibex for Ibuprofen, get it? Ibuprofen is probably the most common NSAID, one that I'm sure you've bought over the counter, you know, as the trade name Advil. But some of these next drug names might not be so familiar to you, so let's move on. In a failed attempt to dodge the Ibex, the man has driven his sled right into a base camp for mountain climbers. Looks like one of the mountain climbers isn't doing so well. We'll talk more about him in a minute, but for now, notice the napkin tucked into his collar. Looks like he's getting ready to eat some of this hot soup to feel better. By the way, this napkin should help you remember naproxen, a napkin for naproxen, since they both start with nap, right? Again, naproxen is a relatively common drug that is often marketed under the trade name Aleve. Got that? Good, let's keep going. Next, take a look at the kettle. The mountain climbers were heating up water in a kettle over the fire, or at least they were before the sled came crashing through. This kettle can help you remember the drug name Ketorolac. Kettle for Ketorolac. Easy, right? Ketorolac, often called by its trade name Toradol, is an NSAID drug that comes in an IV formulation. This makes it particularly useful for treating post-surgical pain, as this NSAID is often a safer alternative to opioids. I mentioned we were in the Himalayas, but where exactly? Take a look at that sign pointing towards India. Part of this mountain range runs through India, so it makes sense to have a sign and an Indian flag to help orient the climbers. This sign pointed towards India should help you remember the drug name Indomethacin. Get it? India for Indomethacin? Indomethacin is an NSAID drug generally used in a pediatrics context to close a patent foramen ovale. This detail isn't that important to know for the NCLEX, just remember that Indomethacin is an NSAID drug and you'll be set. I mentioned before how the sick man here is getting ready to eat some soup. Let's take a closer look at the soup, specifically at the celery in the soup. This celery should help you remember the last NSAID drug name we'll cover, Celecoxib. Celery for Celecoxib. It's the Celecoxib celery. With the drug names out of the way, let's move on to how these drugs are actually used in the clinical setting. As the sled came crashing into camp, it landed right in the explorer's fire and is now going up in flames. Good thing the mountain guide had a fire extinguisher on hand to put out the flames. Here at Pixarize, we use a fire extinguisher as our recurring symbol for anti-inflammatory drugs. Because a fire extinguisher puts out flames, just like anti-inflammatories put out inflammation. NSAIDs have potent anti-inflammatory properties. I mean, they are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs for a reason. We won't go into too much detail on the mechanism here, but in a nutshell, NSAIDs inhibit the COX enzymes, which are responsible for synthesizing inflammatory molecules like prostaglandins in the body. So by stopping the COX enzymes, there isn't as much inflammation. Got that? This anti-inflammatory effect makes NSAIDs useful in treating inflammatory diseases like arthritis or ulcerative colitis. Getting hit by an Ibex is an extremely painful experience, as you can imagine. Just take a look at the guy's face wincing in pain. This pain should help you remember that NSAIDs are used to treat pain, specifically mild to moderate pain. Different NSAIDs will be used in different situations, but in general, over-the-counter NSAIDs are great for treating the everyday aches and pains like headaches, menstrual pain, muscle cramps, and so on. You probably already know this, so let's just move on. One of the mountain climbers has fallen sick during this climb. We'll talk about why in a moment, but he sure is spiking a high fever. I mean, the thermometer is reading super hot. This high thermometer can help you remember that NSAIDs are used to treat fever. NSAIDs have antipyretic properties, meaning they lower fevers. Now that we've talked about when NSAIDs are given, let's move on to some of the side effects and adverse reactions of NSAIDs. When the Ibex rammed into the sled, its horns caught on the man's shirt, creating a big gaping hole right over the belly. 
You know, the way this hole in the shirt is right over the stomach reminds me of how NSAIDs can cause holes in the gut wall, known as gastrointestinal ulcers. Yep, the most important side effect of NSAIDs to know is that they can increase the risk of GI ulcers, especially in the stomach and duodenum. Technically, NSAIDs reduce the protective mucosal lining of our gut walls, leaving them more susceptible to damage from stomach acid. GI ulcers can be prevented by taking NSAIDs with plenty of food and water, taking only the recommended dose, and by avoiding alcohol, since alcohol can promote ulcer formation. Keep an eye out for symptoms like nausea, abdominal pain, or bloody stools, because these are potential symptoms of GI ulcers. Not only did the Ibex's horns pierce through his shirt, but they also cut the man's skin so that he's bleeding. This should help you remember that NSAIDs can cause bleeding. We talked earlier about how NSAIDs inhibit the COX enzymes to lower production of certain inflammatory molecules. One of these molecules is the thromboxanes, which actually play a role in platelet plug formation to stop bleeding after injury. So by reducing the formation of these thromboxanes, NSAIDs also reduce the body's ability to clot, leading to an increased risk of bleeding. Got that? Not only does our sick friend have a fever, but he is also coughing up a storm. The way he is coughing should help you remember that NSAIDs can cause bronchospasm. This is really only an issue for patients who have pre-existing respiratory conditions, such as asthma. NSAIDs can exacerbate the asthma, so be cautious in giving NSAIDs to asthmatic patients. Oh no, not the soup! The NSAID sled crashed into the fire, knocking over the soup that was going to be given to the sick guy. The soup has celery, like we talked about earlier, but it was also full of beans that are now spilling out onto the ground. Here at Pixarize, we use falling beans as our symbol for nephrotoxicity. Let me explain. The beans are shaped just like a kidney, and they are falling, just like kidney function falls in nephrotoxicity. Get it? Use these falling beans to help you remember that NSAIDs can cause nephrotoxicity. NSAIDs reduce blood flow to the kidneys and should be avoided in patients with known kidney disease. It's also a good idea to avoid NSAIDs if patients are already taking another nephrotoxic medication, like lithium. The guide was super prepared for the trip, not only with a fire extinguisher, but he also brought along tons of extra water, which they used in the kettle and to make the soup. When you think of all this extra water, remember that NSAIDs cause the body to keep extra water. You'll hear this called fluid retention. The fluid retention is usually mild, but the patient may notice some peripheral edema as a result. It's worth thinking twice about giving NSAIDs to patients with heart failure because a little extra fluid retention can cause deterioration of their condition. Last but not least, let's get down to the bottom of what made this hiker so sick. Turns out he got bit by a tarantula. Take a look at the bite marks on his arm and the tarantula still sitting right there next to him. At Pixarize, the tarantula is our recurring symbol for teratogenic drugs. It's the teratogenic tarantula. NSAIDs should not be given in pregnancy and especially not during the third trimester. There are a few reasons for this, one being that NSAIDs can close the ductus arteriosus prematurely in the fetus, leading to cyanosis, and another being that it increases the bleeding risk during delivery. Just be aware that acetaminophen is preferred over NSAIDs for pregnant women. All right, that's all for this mnemonic on the NSAIDs. Let's recap and get back to the slopes. NSAIDs, short for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, are a class of medications that include the drug names ibuprofen, naproxen, ketorolac, indomethacin, and celecoxib. Clinically, NSAIDs are used to treat mild to moderate pain, reduce inflammation to treat diseases like arthritis, as well as to reduce fevers. Side effects of NSAIDs include GI ulcer formation and an increased risk of bleeding. NSAIDs can cause bronchospasm to exacerbate asthma. NSAIDs can cause kidney damage or nephrotoxicity as well as fluid retention. And finally, NSAIDs are teratogenic and should be avoided in pregnant women, especially during the third trimester. And now we're actually done with NSAIDs. Remember to sled safely, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.